Today, I want to talk about something that is really important on the management of my land for biodiversity, and that is wildflower meadows. Now, I have to admit that between flora and fauna, fauna is definitely my area of expertise, but that's what this is all about, learning and understanding what I can do along the way. And it's also a community-based thing. So if you guys note that I have identified something wrong or perhaps made an error in my video, I'd really appreciate any advice you can give me in the comments below. But what I want to focus on now is how important meadows and wildflower meadows are for biodiversity in particular. The key bit about biodiversity is diversity. And I've noticed over the last few years how particular insects can be about the kind of plants that they eat, live on and breed on. Let me show you an example of that. This is ragwort and I have quite a bit of it across the land and it's a great pollinator. The bees absolutely love it. But there's a particular moth called the cinnabar moth who lays its eggs only on this plant. Its caterpillars will only eat this plant and they're beautiful caterpillars as you can see. They're a beautiful kind of wasp-like yellow and red stripes. Their larvae actually live under the ground and they emerge as these beautiful red and black daytime moths. They're really stunning, but if I want those moths on my land, I need this plant. Very similarly, as we've seen before, there's the dock leaf beetle, another example. Um, and as its name suggests, it likes dock leaves. It only lives on dock leaves, breeds on dock leaves, lays its eggs on dock leaves, and eats dock leaves. So the more of those beautiful little beetles I want on the land, the more dock leaves I need. And the list goes on and on. The more of a variety and diversity of plants I have on the land, the more diversity of insects, and then on up the food chain will appear on the land as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do today, as I have done with invertebrates already in a previous video, is go around the land and see what wildflowers I can identify now. Because as I make changes to the land over the years, this can change dramatically and I will get new types of wildflowers coming up and I need to know if they have been here before or not. So that's really important to understand what's on the land already. So as I make changes down the line, I know what difference I'm making. So let's go and see what kind of wildflowers we can find today. Okay, so I already have quite a good variety of wildflowers on the land here at the end of summer, which is fantastic. I have a great foundation to build upon, but there's lots of room for improvement. One of the main things that I can do here on the land 
to allow wildflowers to come up naturally is to reduce the amount and the density of grass that I have here on the land. Now, for the most part, I have one kind of grass here and it's called Yorkshire Fog. Now, Yorkshire Fog is actually quite a pretty grass, but the problem with it is, is that it's quite dense and I have it across all four fields and it's quite dense. And as it collapses, it creates quite a thick patch that makes it very difficult for wildflowers to come up through. So I need to reduce the amount of it that I have. This is Yorkshire Fog here, and the lighter one beside it here in front of me is a lovely grass called bent grass, which is one of the other most common grasses that I have here on the land. But the Yorkshire Fog, this one, as I mentioned, falls and creates quite a thick layered patch that makes it very difficult for wildflowers to come up through. And there is a natural way to solve this problem. I don't have to go and rip up the whole field and plant another grass down. All I have to do is plant the meadow maker, which is such a cool name. Yellow rattle is also known as the meadow maker, and it's a semi-parasitic wildflower that will reduce the amount and the density of Yorkshire fog. It won't kill it off completely, which is fine, but it will reduce the amount of it, which will allow other wildflowers to come up through. And yellow rattle itself is a wildflower, so it's a win-win situation all around. So I'm really looking forward to planting yellow rattle in and around the land over the next couple of months. This is very much just an introductory video about my fields and meadows and the plans that I have for it. It's very much chapter one, and I'm going to be creating a series meeting experts and talking about much more granular detail um, about wildflower meadows and things like no mow may and the, the pros and very much cons of no mow may and other initiatives like that, which are fantastic intentions, but we'll get into that in another video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. As usual, feel free to subscribe and I'll keep making more of these videos so you can join the Rewild Life. <laughs>